Hello everyone, it's Noelle from Noelle's Nook, and today I'm bringing you kind of a twofer today. And that is because I'm not only doing a fandom drawing, I'm also doing kind of a new technique slash um, kind of just having fun video. I recently dug out a bunch of my art supplies from college, and I also wanted to try my hand at drawing other characters from Voltron. So if you haven't watched it already, go ahead. It's on Netflix. It's pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> so yeah, let's get into this, guys. So I started my drawing out using a Prismacolor color race, and I'm using this on just regular sketchbook paper. And I'm doing this because I do want to draw this character in other mediums as well but mainly I'm using acrylic paint and it's basically because, well one, I bought this paint about two years ago and I really want to use it up. So I figured I would use it in this art video because um, I do want to try my hand at different mediums as well. So I wanted to at least keep a copy of this drawing to be able to trace later and you'll see me tracing on my um, door window <laughs> because uh, we're going to be using a uh, what is it called a Bristol a Bristol board paper just like in the self portrait I did last week um, we're going to use the same paper which is just a nice kind of heavy almost cardstock feeling paper and it's pretty great for dry mediums as well as acrylic obviously <laughs> now I am probably the worst when it comes to drawing men especially ones that have very masculine features like the very square jaw lines or very prominent brows. So I figured why not try drawing Shiro because one, I love his character. He's very much a leader, a very uh, born leader and I like his look. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just kind of wanted to try my hand at this, especially since this particular screenshot from the show has him kind of, he's, he's at a tilt, he's at a slant, the way he's standing. So I figured it would be a challenge for me to do him in this particular way, as well as uh, the medium that I'm gonna be using later. The hardest part for me for doing Shiro was definitely his expression. He has a definite, lit, uh, oh my goodness, I can't talk. He has this particular look to him and um, it was just, challenging I think and plus uh, hairstyles just in general you guys know I'm horrible at doing hair and uh, trying to make sure that I was measuring him accurately that was also difficult I think I erased him several times I think his eyes at least trying to get his eyes just the right way so it was definitely a good practice for me measuring and doing skills like that now that I think about it I really would like to invest in a light box or at least create something that's really cheap like making a plastic container and just flipping it over and having like a flashlight shine through it because um for one just doing this against my door my arms were hurting and also you know you have to rely heavily on daylight which you know when i draw really late at night i can't rely on so i think maybe getting like a, just a cheapo plastic container and flipping it around would be good for me, especially since I do want to redraw or at, at least revamp or I don't know, redo this in a different medium. Now it has been literal years since I've used acrylic, so I forgot how much of a struggle I had when I was using it in college and forgetting how quickly it dries. So if you're ever using acrylic, it's basically liquefied plastic. I don't know. But um, yeah, and blending skin tone when you only have the colors of the rainbow. Now that was interesting. I think I took, it was a mix of white, yellow, orange, red, and purple. And that's how I made his skin tone. And I was just sitting here mixing and mixing and I used something called a retarder medium which uh, it makes the drying time a lot slower so you have more time to work with the acrylic uh, but it also makes it dry a lot slower especially on the piece and that was probably one of the most frustrating things because to make acrylic really opaque 
sometimes you need to do a couple of layers, um, like I did, because the retarder medium does, uh, what does it do? What's that word? <laughs> it kind of waters it down. And so you have to uh, put more layers on top. And that was where I was like, oh man, why did I do this? <laughs> I have to say though, when it was all said and done, I really liked the look of the finished piece. At least the painting part. <laughs> because later you'll see me attempting to use the brush pen that I talked about in my self-portrait video. A tip I have to say, whenever you, you are tracing your work from one paper to the next, trace it accurately. Because when I was done, I noticed that his one side of his face was a little bit more skewed. Then the other, like for example, um, on his, on our right side, his left side, his eye is a lot shorter than the other one. And his eyebrows a little bit thicker as well. So that is one thing I have to just point out, you know, when you're tracing, make sure you trace as accurately as possible. Or when you're done tracing, look at the original piece and see where you made mistakes and <laughs> fix them on the other paper. I really appreciate doing these technique challenges because then I can see what works uh, for me personally. Um, I am find that I am more comfortable using watercolors and I feel like my strengths are there. So changing mediums, you not only have to rework your technique, um, you also have to see if you need new tools. Like specifically for this, I could not really use the pens that I use for watercolor because they're um, made of a different material and they probably wouldn't work. So you have to kind of, it's fun to play around with and see what works and what doesn't. And here comes the dreaded brush pen. Guys, if you only knew how much my hand was shaking when I was doing this, not only was some of the paint still a little bit wet and it was getting on my hand, but the thing with brush pens is you have to be kind of careful with them because uh, too much pressure and you'll get a really thick line, not enough pressure and you'll get a really thin line. So <laughs> trying to find the happy medium between the two was really hard, especially since I'm using, um, I'm used to using uh, pens that have uh, their own thickness. Like say I have a medium pen, I have a fine pen, a small and extra small, things like that. So the thick or thickness is already determined depending on that pen but with a brush pen you have all of them in one and you <laughs> you have to be really careful and so in the back of my head I was like oh crap if I don't do this this way it's gonna look like this and who I was shaken I think my heart rate went up too while I was doing it but I'm not upset that I did it because I feel like if I work on it more the more I will get used to it and my technique will get better. Thank you guys so much for watching and thank you so much for joining me on my little art journey. I hope this has helped you in some way and I hope you guys come back for more. So go ahead and leave a like and a comment. I love to read your comments and interact with you guys. You know that. And go ahead and subscribe if you'd like to see more like this and I'll see you in the next one and have an awesome day.